So this recording has been a long time coming. Um, what I'd like to share here are a couple of OSL nodes, these the triplanar coordinates and hextile coordinates OSL node, as well as the transform tangent normal OSL. I'm actually going to be working my way back here. So uh, we're going to start with transform tangent normal. This shader can actually be used by the hextile and triplanar coordinates OSL nodes, but it's also helpful just by itself. If you have a tangent normal connected here, you can rotate the tangent space so that the normals point in different directions. So beyond that, um, this is actually useful for correcting the normal orientations when we use a hextile or triplanar coordinates. Um, so let's get into the hextile first. If I select all of these texture nodes, I come down here to my remap offset on the texture nodes, and I connect node existing nodes, hextile coordinates, UV offset. So initially, this looks like it's worked. So we have um, control over the hextile grid. We can change the random rotation of each of the cells. Um, but it's not actually behaving correctly with the normal. So we're going to take our tangent space output from the hextile coordinates over here. And we're going to connect it to transform tangent space. Now this is correct. These normals are now corrected. Um, as they rotate through the hextile, they will rotate correctly um, to preserve their orientation. Now, uh, hextile, what is that? <laughs> um, kind of skipped that bit, didn't I? So this is essentially, I think it'll be easiest if I show you the cell weights. There's a cell weights output here. I'm going to connect to the surface. And these are our hex tiles. And there's a grid of hex tiles controlled by the grid repetitions. Um, each of these cells receives a, its own UV coordinates that are modified. Uh, there's a blend amount here on the edges, so we can change how much they blend between the cells. If you have a height texture, that you're and you're planning to use this for uh, the hextile coordinates for a specific texture set that has a height texture you can load that height texture in here and that allows you to adjust the boundaries based on the heights defined in this height texture we can take a closer look at that in a bit there's also a noise weight which if you don't have a height texture and you want to just break up those edges some to make it less obvious where the edges are, you can use this noise weight. Um, there's also, of course, we probably want to blend this a little bit. And then there are random transforms that can be applied to the UVs of each cell. So to see that, we kind of have to, we got to go back to our material. Uh, and I'm going to reduce the noise weight for now. I may also actually I'm going to turn off under sampling just so we can see more clearly what's going on. Um, and I'm going to reduce the blend amount just so we can see these edges. Right there is a, the corner where three hexes are meeting. And I'm going to increase my height weight until I get to one. And when I get to one, it should be really, really difficult to find any edges in here. Uh, but if you're concerned that, oh, there might still be some edges, or you're, I don't know where the edges are, you can adjust your blend amount, and that'll help you find those edges, and also just slightly blend between them. So this is a great way to remove repeating patterns from textures. Um, you do have some controls down here in terms of uh, the way that they get the UVs get translated. Let me reset these all to zero, and you can see what the hex tiles looks like if we don't randomize it at all. Um, you can see the repeating pattern. We do our translation, our random translation. We do our random rotation. We add a little random scale. 
There's also a rotation steps, which changes essentially, right now the random rotation is, it could be anything, right, from negative 360 to positive 360. Um, the rotation steps essentially limits which rotation amounts are possible. And I'm actually, I have a hard time, I always have a hard time remembering exactly how this works. I believe it's something like, at zero, you get the full range. At one, I believe, and I, I made this node, so I should know, but I forget. Uh, I believe we now have, we have zero, we have positive 360, and negative 360. So it's one step in both directions from zero. Two, I believe we have zero, 180, 360, and negative 180 and negative 360. But essentially, this is intended if you have a, a pattern, a texture that's not as organic, and you want to randomize it some, but you still want to maintain, say it's like a sci-fi paneling texture or something, you want to maintain some of the lines running horizontally, vertically, etc. This gives you some control to allow you to do that. But if you're working with an organic texture, zero is probably the value you want to use. Um, yeah, so that's hex tile coordinates. Now, separately, I'm going to I'm going to enable this stone here, which already has the hex tile. This is has the same material applied, so this has the hex tile coordinates uh, applied to it. But if we look in here at right here, we can see there's a, a, a UV seam, and that is because this stone has UV coordinates that have this seam. Um, there's not really anything we can do to solve that when, if we're just using the hex tile coordinates. So briefly, I want to jump over, stop using the hex tile coordinates, and show the triplanar coordinates. So we're going to replace this node with triplanar coordinates, UV offset, and we also want to hook the tangent space up to our transform tangent normal to fix the, the normals. So triplanar coordinates, somewhat similar to uh, hex tile coordinates, only it does uh, triplanar. So if we increase our blend amount, you can see it's changing the blend on these edges where you have a top and a, you know, basically it's projecting along X, Y, and Z axes. And uh, we are blending here has a lot of the same controls. You ha you can give it a height texture. Um, you can use noise weight to sort of modify so it doesn't look like such a straight line. Um, and we have some projection space options. Are, are we projecting an object space? Generally, you'd want to do that. So as you rotate the object, the borders don't swim or move. And then you can translate the uh, coordinate system and rotate the coordinate system and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so that's, that's triplanar coordinates. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could combine these two? We can. This is some work I've done, and this is one of the reasons why it took a little while to get this out here. Uh, I've also just been very busy. But if we hook our triplanar UV, not the UV offset, but the triplanar UV up here to coordinates, triplanar UV, and we hook our tangent out up to coordinates, tangent in, We've just told this hex tile to essentially ignore the UV coordinates of the underlying surface and instead use the UV coordinates generated by the triplanar coordinates. So I am going to go back and reconnect all of these to our hex tile. UV offset, make sure we put our tangent space into the transform tangent normal. And now we have our triplanar coordinates feeding our hex tile, so we no longer have that um, straight seam. There's a blend. We might want to adjust our noise weight to kind of change how it blends on that edge, reduce the blend amount a little bit, play with it. Um, on the hex tile coordinates, we could change our grid repetitions. We could increase the noise weight here, add a little more randomness. We're already using the height weight here. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the cell weights. Let's dump the cell weights into our surface and you can see where all those hex hexagrids are. 
If you're interested, there's also a texture weights. There's a texture weights output on Triplanar. If we hook that up, this shows us what's being projected down on the Y, X, and Z. Just kind of shows you what textures are being applied there. Um, and those are being mapped with the hex tile coordinates in this case. So let me hook the surface back up here. And we will not see any UV seams here. Um, unfortunately, we cannot use the height weight here. I mean, well, you can use the height weight. Let me, let me pull the height weight in here uh, really quickly uh, and give it a moment. The problem with using the height weight here is that um, th this texture is going to be mapped based on the triplanar coordinates, not on the hex tile. So this texture, although it's from the same texture set, will not align with the textures we're seeing here, because the textures we're seeing here are from the hex tile. Uh, so that's just a bit of a bummer, but you can still use it to break up the edge. It's just uh, it's just not going to align with the uh, texture set quite right. So in general, I would say use the noise weight to break up the edge here. You can adjust the scale of that noise, uh, get something that, that hides it pretty well. For your triplanar coordinates, and then uh, you can use the height weight in the hextile coordinates because this is the one that's actually defining the UV coordinates that are being used for the textures. So the same UV coordinates can be used to apply this height. Yeah, so we've got our random rotate, we've got our random translate. Uh, one of the fun things we can do is just drag this random seed here and get all kinds of different variations on this, this rock. <laughs> uh, no UV seams. Uh, the normals are working correctly again because of the transform tangent normals. We've got our tangent space feeding that. And uh, yeah, so you can use, I mean, I, sh I should talk a little bit about what makes these kind of unique, these, these coordinate OSL shaders. Um, they are not taking images in, obviously. They are generating UV coordinates. They, they are then supplying to the textures. Um, the blending is uh, some secret sauce <laughs> because you can't really blend UV coordinates generally. But um, I came up with a, with a clever way to effectively blend them. So I'm using that method. It's essentially a stochastic blend where there's uh, the blend amount is, is, is a probability and it's randomly choosing per camera sample, per, per camera ray, whether to select from uh, this UV coordinate or that UV coordinate based on that underlying probability. Uh, but you don't need to know any of that to use it. Um, the nice thing though is that these two nodes together, you've got your triplanar, that's project, you don't need UVs. You've got your hex tile that gets rid of any repetition of the texture um, and allows for all this randomization. And those can feed your entire texture set or more than one texture set. If you have two materials and you want to blend them, they could be using the same coordinates generated from the triplanar and hextile. Or you could have a separate set of triplanar and hextile. On this hextile, maybe we just tweak the random seed a little bit. And then that can drive the other texture set for your other material. You've got a lot of options. Um, I think it's a really powerful tool set for doing sort of organic environmental texturing. Uh, check it out. Try it out. Let me know what you think. If you have any trouble with it, let me know in the comments. Um, all three of these nodes, the transform tangent normal, triplanar coordinates, and hextile coordinates are available in the Redshift uh, OSL GitHub repo. I will include a link to that in the video description and you can download it there. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention is the triplanar UV, in addition to being useful to connect to the hextile coordinates, this should also allow Maya users to use this more, more efficiently, more effectively. Um, Maya textures expect the UV coordinates rather than a UV offset.
So depending on what your DCC is expecting, if it's expecting an offset, you can use UV offset. If it's expecting UVs straight up, you can use the triplanar UV output or the uh, hextile UV output, which I will add here as well. Um, yeah, have fun, guys.